Hi, this is John Humphreys with another tutorial, this time on how to use the debugger in the IntelliJ IDEA Java language environment. The debugger basically lets you run your code in a way where you can stop wherever you need to and analyze the state of things. So basically you start by creating breakpoints, which are places where the debugger will stop when it reaches that point in the code. A breakpoint can be conditional so you can stop, for example, when it index mod 2 equals 0, which would only hit even numbers, or on something really arbitrary, like when you're processing a specific person's social security number, and you want to stop and look at that so you know there's a problem with it. This way you can quickly get to look at what you need to look at in the debugger. At a breakpoint, you can analyze the state of pretty much everything, so you can see what variables exist and what their values are. You can even update the values if you want to. Yeah? we can see where we are in the call stack. So for example, if function A was called by main, you'd see a main and an A, so you know you're in a nested call. And we could also see what threads are currently running and what thread we're running on, if that's important to you. You can create watches, which lets you observe the result of calculated values at the breakpoint. So you can call functions or concatenations, or whatever you need to. And uh, you could even use a watch to call a function, so you can mutate the state or force a garbage collection or anything else you might want to do in that situation. To keep things short and sweet, I'm going to jump into a pre-built program I have here, which has just enough in it to let us use the main features of the debugger. So first of all, I've also included some extra key notes up here about key functions. So once you're in the debugger, if you want to move to the next line, you just hit F8. If you want to go into the current line, like it's a function call, you hit F7 and it will follow the code into the function. And if you just want to run to completion or up to the next breakpoint, you press F9. There's plenty of other options and you can see them all up here in this menu, but those are the three you really need to have some fun. So what I'm going to do in the first place is I'm going to right click here and we can see that I have a debug option. So this is the fastest way to get in the debugger, but there's plenty of different ways to run something. Right now I have no breakpoints, so if I run this, it's just going to compile, run, and spit out a whole bunch of output. We didn't stop anywhere, so we did a debugging session, but no breakpoints. Now if I come in here and actually add a breakpoint, let's say on the first line, and redo the run, we're going to see that the only variable I have access to is args, but we can see that it clearly stopped. I'm on this blue line, there's my breakpoint. So using our little key up here, if I want to step over this line, I press F8, and we can see I'm on this function line now. This function gets called right here. We still don't have much interesting, so let's press F7 now and get into this function. And if we go one more line with another F8, we can now see that I have a variable called C. Now C is an instance of this other class that we have. And we can see that C just has one variable in it, and it's called hello person. Now, if we wanted to see some more about C, we can add a watch. This little button down here with like the glasses and the plus sign is a watch. So we can actually type our variable name, and it's got autocomplete just like you're coding. And I can see that C has the message string variable, which we see down here. It's got two functions. One is called make message, and one is called other function, which is just a sample. So let's say we're curious about what make message does. I can click that and put in, it wants an integer, right? So let's say I put in 17. The result of calling C.make message with 17 would be hello, person number 17. It's kind of interesting, right? But anyway, let's go further and use F7 to step into this function. All right, so we're in other function, and you can notice that it went right into the other class, which is pretty awesome, right? And we can see this function has a for loop. Every line calls that make message function we just checked out down here. And by the way, interesting fact, the watch we created a minute ago stayed down here, right? And now it doesn't work because there's no local variable called C. But if we went and edited this watch and just called make message 17, 
it'll work again because now we're within this class so we don't have to call that function on anything it's just this so if we put a variable uh, breakpoint in this loop now we can press f9 sorry i was having a little issues hitting that and uh i think they might have changed that one it might not be f9 maybe it's uh, run the cursor. So it would be Alt and F9 now. So we can see sometimes you need to double check things. But anyway, so now I'm at this breakpoint. And uh, we can see that the value of i is 0. This is the first time through this loop. So again, we're using this variable panel. We could also see that we originally called this function with the base value parameter being equal to pi. That's why when we originally ran the program, we saw it go from 5 to 55 when it was printing out all of the names. So anyway, let's say we wanted to specifically evaluate this at i equals 45. We can right click on this breakpoint here and it opens up this special menu. And again, we have another autocomplete thing, which is pretty cool. So we can say i equals equals 45. Now when it hits this, it'll work. And you could use any kind of functions or anything you have access to in this area. So you can make a really complicated breakpoint if you need to. So if we use Alt and F9 now, we can run all the way, and it did a whole bunch of iterations down to the point where i equals 45. So if we look at our console, we'll see that we actually printed out up to hello person 49 and that's because we went from i equals 0 and having the base value of 5 all the way up to i equals 45 so the base value makes it print higher numbers anyway so that shows you how you can easily get through loops and do whatever you need to do we can also come into here and go say the base value is suddenly 99 so we've actually gone and changed the hard-coded compiled value in this program when this is called to a different number so that we can go play it out, which is pretty cool, right? So now that we've set that value, we can come up to our run panel and do resume program, which should be F9, but I've realized my recording software is conflicting with that. And we can say resume. This will run through the end of our program. We can see that we're no longer debugging. If we come in here, we can see that we got all the way up to person, hello person number 148. That's because we changed our base value to 99, and we were still going up to 50, so you can see, because we started from 0 to win this. So that shows you a relatively full debugging example. You've seen how you can step through functions, modify variables, and everything. The one last thing I wanted to point out before we clean up is that if you rerun the debugger, which you can do with that handy symbol I just hit there, and let's say we go down a bit. I'm going to jump into the other function one last time, and even set a breakpoint here, and now that we're down here, we can see this call stack over here. This is the last thing I wanted to show you. We can see that we started with main in the app class, and then we called some function in the app class, and then we called other function in this class, and then we called make message within this class. And the cool thing is, look, as I'm moving up and down through here, it's bringing me back through the original calls of what we did. So I can go through and investigate everything, which is a really neat feature to see how you got somewhere, especially when you're setting breakpoints deep into your nest of code and you're not really sure how it got there in the first place. Sometimes you know where the problem is when you're going and looking up an exception, but you don't really know how the problem happened, and this helps you back backtrace it. So that's all I had to show you. I said I'd keep it short and sweet. There's plenty more you can do, but this is a really good solid foundation, and it'll take you a while to start using this and get used to it as well. But thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope it helped you. And if it did, please like and subscribe and come back for more later on. I'll be trying to make videos more regularly going forward. Thank you.